Is it something national already? Your quit line? Okay. So I will just also show the theory behind, of course, uh, having the quit line. And in terms of smoking prevalence in Vietnam compared to the Philippines, we are more or less the same this year. Now, we started off at a very high prevalence of 28% in 2009, and we were able to drastically bring it down because of our success with our syntax. So I think we won an award in the, the World Health Organization. They made it as a financial model as to how to really uh, decrease the prevalence of smoking, but it was not through the quit line. It was through the syntax. And of course, the deaths attributable to tobacco smoke and other non-communicable risk factors is still very high here in the Philippines and also Vietnam. So that's why we're very red there in our color. And these are the things that we both have to aim for, our two countries. So we aim, of course, the whole world to bring down our uh, the deaths related to smoking and, of course, reduce the prevalence here by 30% by the year 2025. That means you, you are 22%, 30% of that, we have to bring it down to what? 12%, I think, or 16 no? So by year 2025. And what's the year now? 2018. So is it possible to do that in seven years? We really have to do something drastic. So, of course, we are all members of the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control, and that's why they are pounding it on us that we have to follow the implementing rules of the FCTC for us to get there to our target of lowering it to 30%. Now, specifically for smoking cessation, it is Article 14. They have already the guidelines for us how to have the comprehensive tobacco cessation and treatment system. And our speakers later from, the depart from your Department of Health will be talking more about this. So I will just talk on the quit line. So the quit line, of course, is part and parcel of the integrated um, interventions that we have to do for smoking cessation. So it is part of building the infrastructure and it has some, it is just part of the, or it's just one of the keg in terms of the wheel for us to accomplish smoking cessation throughout, the, throughout your country and my country. It is part of the population level approach. So it is number 46 in FCTC Article 14 where the WHO tells us that we have to have a quit line. So each country has to have a quit line. All parties should offer that if we want to be part of the FCTC. It is part of our proactive effort to help all smokers stop smoking. So how, how are you faring, Vietnam, in terms of smoking cessation efforts? So us, we are that color, and you, more or less, is the same color also as the Philippines. So you know that we are assessed by the EMPOWER acronym and smoking cessation will be under letter O. So that would be, how are you faring Vietnam in terms of cessation programs? And this was your assessment last year. So in terms of cigarette um, price, that is where you are lacking. So that's why you are red there in the R. So I think your government will be working on that, and that's why the next speakers, I think, will touch on that aspect. So that is one part where the Philippines excelled last year. So that's why um, we are already blue in the letter R. But in the letter O, we are the same color as you. We still have a lot of things to do for smoking cessation. So what is a quit line? It is something that we need to do. It is the basic definition was it's a telephone-based cessation service where counselors would offer or will be available through audio, so through talking. And they are staffed by highly trained professionals, so we have to make an effort to train them, the ones manning the, what we call the call centers. So they're basically call centers. So the nice thing about quit lines is it's free, it's confidential, and it can meet the needs of the smokers any time of the day. And we can even use that to provide medications. 
So there are many, many ways how quit lines are done. It varies in structure, size, and complexity. So clients can directly call or they can just have a recording system that will assist them, not really a, a, a counselor at that moment in time. Or it can be part, as I mentioned, of a broader service. So even the nurse, for example, in a smoking cessation service, if somebody calls them, that can already be considered as a quit line. But that would be quite a local uh, type of quit line. So as I mentioned, this can be a small thing or it can be a big thing, national level, for example, where there are hundreds of staff. So for example, in New York, this is how their quit line is. So it's a big thing servicing the whole state. And as you can see there, this is still a reactive kind of quit line, where it is the smoker or the healthcare professional who initiates the smoker to be in contact now with the telephone system. So the, there are the quit coaches, of course, and as you can see here, they are able to prescribe or they can, they're able to dispense the medication. So nicotine replacement therapy does not need any prescription. So as long as the counselor will say, this person would need NRT at this time, then they get the contact number. And it's through now the telephone quit line that the smoker is able to get hold of his NRT. It is delivered to him or his house. So it can be that intensive. We can make use of that. So range of services, again, the counseling is the heart of quit line services. And then, as I mentioned, it varies in the number of calls, the amount of time spent on each call. And then referral, of course, is possible now. And you can really network to the smoking cessation program or to other even web-based services. So that's a nice thing about it. You can also deliver print materials to the smoker after you get his address or his contact number. And then online support, of course, can be given. So now we are moving into SMS. So it's always now somehow tied with SMS services. Many of the more complex are quit lines because that would, of course, extend our reach to Twitter, to emails, to chat rooms. That is very much possible. And then one thing I'm sure I, you might not have been exploring this, as I mentioned, providing pharmacotherapy. So it's integrated, as I mentioned, and then it can be reactive or proactive. So it's better if it's proactive, you now reach out. How will I now get the smokers? I don't need to wait for him to call me. So that is one thing that we really need to work on also, how to be proactive in our quit lines. So it's really changing the definition rapidly. It depends now on the services and the other ways to reach our smokers there. So the types of counseling services are, again, very varied. The nice thing about this, it can be any place and at no cost to the tobacco user as long as he has a telephone or a cell phone or probably an online um, access. So they can even target it now to specific groups. So in the U.S., they have many studies where the disadvantaged groups are able, they're able to get hold of them through, again, the quit line because sometimes it's not possible to reach them face to face. The World Health Organization has this extensive handbook, and I'm sure you used it when you set up your own um, hotline or quit line here in Hanoi. It's very detailed, and I'll provide you some of the details there. So what would be the benefits of the quit line? So I'm sure having listened so far to the slides that I've presented, you've already gleaned the advantages or benefits from quit lines compared to face-to-face -face counseling, compared to hospital-based counseling. So of course, from the health ministry perspective, it's population-based. It, we are able to create a central resource with the quit lines, and then it serves as a portal. Anything can come in. All the other smoking cessation services can all merge into the quit lines. So everybody can use that. So what is the abstinence rate by using it? You are able to add 4 to 6% population-based wide in terms of success in smoking cessation. So that's still a very sizable number. Face-to-face -face counseling, what's your success rate there? 30%, more or less. Brief advice, 2 to 5%. So you're able to add here another 4 to 6% in terms of success. 
And then it's quite easy to do it as long as you have the proper system. And somehow we, you know that it has broad acceptance by the public. So that's nice. And then as you train more counselors, you're actually having more smoking cessation advocates. And they can now be even, they can, they can change their roles. They can do face-to-face -face counseling if they're doing it online or through the telephone. So from the individual health care providers, it's easy to, to give this package to them. The, the health maintenance organizations and other health care-based organizations because it's easy, convenient, and then it's evidence-based as we know. And of course, somehow, again, it's quite acceptable to anybody you know, because it does, not, uh, it does not create too much effort as long as the money is there to set up the system. And then, we, of course, we'll be able to increase the number of patients. And again, medications can be provided here. Now, from the individual smoker himself, what would be the benefit for him? Would he like to be using the quit line instead of a face-to-face? -face? Our traffic in Metro Manila is so terrible. So yours is very minor <laughs> here in Hanoi compared to us. So it's impossible virtually to go to one place to another. You spend one and a half hour traveling just to get from uh, five kilometers away. So that's how traffic it is. And that's why we really have to explore it there in the Philippines. So the nice thing about the quit line, available anywhere, 24-7, anytime, no cost as long as you have the phone. And then it's confidential as long as you abide by the Data Privacy Act, of course, in the different countries. It can be tailored. And then um, somehow these are what we call um, beauty points for the government and for the society that you have such a service. So. It, it shows that the society is taking care of their citizens, especially the disadvantaged ones or the smokers. And then the potential added benefits. Now here, this is a nice term. It somehow normalizes quitting. Because before, well of course, smoking is not something nice to do anymore in our society. It's not that acceptable as before. But you quitting, everybody is there to help. And Having that quit line again um, enforces that kind of behavior where you, everybody wants to help somebody stop smoking. So that's what they call normalizing quitting. And then um, the support, of course, becomes tangible. And then this also becomes a way to report some violations for smoke-free legislation. So you just don't probably sometimes use the hotline to ask for counseling. But you can report things, oh, these people there in that neighborhood are smoking. And then you can report now violations by somebody to even through that hotline there. So this would be the evidence. So the Cochrane meta-analysis on the effectivity of telephone quit lines was 2013. There have been no additional uh, meta-analysis done. So this was composed of 77 studies. And so here, our forest plot would show that, of course, the odds would really be in favor of uh, the telephone quit line having a greater um, abstinence rate. And as I mentioned, it's 4 to 6% additional abstinence by using the quit line. So Dr. West is a very popular smoking cessation expert. He also did a review and compared to the other forms of smoking cessation, as you can see here, that's 5% for our quit line. So that we, it's what you call high impact, but low effort in terms of having a program for smoking cessation. Affordability. So the bold numbers here will say or will indicate that these are the more cost effective measures. And indeed, proactive telephone support is an affordable and cost effective measure. So automated text messaging is even less expensive. It's even more aff affordable. So we are lo looking forward to studies there are um, or, or to meta analysis where they combine now automated text messaging together with your telephone support. There. So we still I haven't seen the uh, systematic reviews on this. And then printed self help materials will also be there. So it's globally uh, affordable. And here, proactive telephone support, globally affordable also. So that's
that's the conclusion there. So 10 steps in setting up a national quit line service. So if you're going to do something, do one or establish one, these are the things to do. So identify a quit line expert, assess the needs for quit line services. So there are unique features for each society. So for you, for example, for your languages, us also, there are different dialects in the different provinces in the Philippines and the cultural acceptance of phone-based services. So I'm sure in the provinces, there might not be that much acceptance. In the Philippines, we are so text savvy, SMS savvy, so that is the way to go for us there in the Philippines, aside from the usual telephone call. And then determine the place and the role of quit line services. In our country, we make use of the pulmonary fellows in training. <laughs> in the biggest lung center, lung hospital in the Philippines. They are the ones manning our quit line <laughs> because the government anyway is paying for them. And that's why the government say, okay, that's your additional role. <laughs> so they're the ones manning our quit line, aside from some trained counselors also. And then determine the goals, determine the range of services, strategies to create the demand, Determine what sponsors could fund and oversee the quit line because it is not cheap, of course, to set that up and then have a management plan, what organization will deliver the services. We have to identify that and who will be accountable for the metrics or the success of that program. So it is part of the broader service and it is just one of the uh, single issue tobacco specific service and sometimes you even have to out outsource so if you if you're rich it's better for you to have a call center do it you can get a private outfit to do that so you can see online there are many private outfits who can provide this service you now for it's like a service for hire so uh, nations or organizations can also do that so who can provide the service for us in the Philippines, it is the government, and in your area also, it is the government. But for example, you want to beef up your own smoking cessation service, a university can do that, a, a healthcare organization, or even private companies, if you want to add more uh, success to your smoking cessation effort. And then, of course, the bottom line is you have to have good counselors there. It's very important that they are warm and empathetic, that they are not, uh, they, uh, that they will not um, turn away, <laughs> of course, the, the callers or the smokers who would need help. And there is a science to how to do the call sequence. So this would be the usual support. So you can see here that the, at the initial, the first call, then you do counseling there, set a quit date. Before the quit date, there has to be another call on the quit date itself, and then after that, and then so on, to avoid relapse at the end. And this is the counseling flow. So everything is already detailed. We just have to put, uh, operationalize your program because everything already has been outlined and the science behind it has already been provided. So here, you just go on with the flow Make sure that at each point in time, in the uh, important phases of smoking cessation, that uh, contact is provided. And it's not face-to-face, -face, but it's through the phone or through SMS. So in the US, they have, they've been utilizing these different kinds of uh, quit line services. So again, it's very varied. It depends on the need of the society or the, the location. And you have to promote it. It's like any other business that there has to be also advertising for it to be used by the public. So this is our quit line in the Philippines and our depart this is our Department of Health. And as I mentioned, um, we also provide the SMS part for this because we love to text. And uh, last year, we just started it last year. So the latter half of the year, this is our intake only, <laughs> very small number so far. Your, your, yours, you have bigger numbers there. And many, most of the calls really were inquiry, half of them were inquiry, and half would re really wanted counseling to be done on them already when they made the calls. We have more male smokers, therefore more males also availed of our quit, quit line service. And then, as I mentioned, we are divided into provinces. The big and very traffic-laden part of the Philippines is what we call the National Capital Region. 
there are many cities there so it is it is a mega <laughs> mega city with how many how many people 20 million i think in that small place so these are the different cities and the lung center that i've talked about where our quit line is based is in Quezon city most of the uptakers are from another city not from Quezon city <laughs> and then the age bracket look at that so the young ones are availing of it the millennials are availing of it and also those in my age group <laughs> so they're the ones the middle age who are utilizing the quit line and here um, what did the counselors do? Most really provided then and there counseling. And then some a small percentage was referred to face-to-face -face smoking cessation clinics. So at least now we are happy because we are now able to reach beyond Metro Manila, the mega city. So the different provinces, this is where Metro Manila is. And then these are the other provinces there. These are from these provinces. So people now are going, are using the quit line even if they're not based in Metro Manila. So, so far we have 2,397 calls for this. Uh, this, was, um, this was actually for this year only. And our success rate so far is 15%. So good enough? Yeah, I think it's good enough, right? 15%. Yeah, it's quite good. And then it, considering that it's just all by phone or by SMS. No? So I think that's a good rate. Maybe your uh, our representative of the Department of Health can also tell us the success rate of the pit line also. So to summarize the true value, we see you can get another 5% success rate on top of whatever you're doing. It is globally affordable. It is very convenient, confidentiality is preserved, it's personalized, it's 24-7, it's available anytime, anywhere, and it's versatile. You can do anything with it, whatever method, and you can incorporate and integrate it with other cessation services. And it normalizes the behavior of quitting smoking, so that's a nice thing also about it. And as I mentioned, it's beauty points <laughs> for the society, for the government, or for the organization who tries to set up the quit line. Thank you.